everybody, Judge Gudge here, and it's been a while, but I'm here with my new desk, my dedicated painting space, my new camera. It isn't there, it's there. But anyway, today I'm going to show you how I painted up a fantastic gas model from the Lion's Tower for my D&D set. So, let's get cracking. To base coat all the skin on this ghast, I'm going to use AK Interactive's Violet Red. But any sort of pinky purple colour should be fine. Uh, Baracnar Burgundy for Citadel would be a good substitute. So I'm going to cover most of the skin, but mainly on the muscles, on the on the the tops, the recesses. I'm going to leave black. Um, they will get uh, a slight coating with the colour later on when we do some glazes over the top. But for the start, just get all the main details covered. With that base coat applied, we're now going to take a glaze of the same colour, the violet red, and we're just going to make sure we've not got too much on the bristles, and then we're just going to apply that everywhere, make sure all these black areas actually become dark purple. Don't have to be too neat here, because we're just trying to get everything. And with those layers done, we can see the base coat is a lot smoother, which is where we want to be for the next stage. I'm using Forest Skin, which is from the Vallejo Fantasy Malefic skin set, uh, but really any slightly green khaki colour would do. This will help keep the mid-tones of the skin feeling slightly sickly. We're going to apply these mid-tones to the bulk of the muscles, leaving some of the purple near the recesses and the lower parts of the volumes that would be in shadow, like the underside of the arms, the front of the legs, which would be in a lot of shadow. I use my brush strokes to follow the direction of the muscles, that way any brush strokes exaggerate the fibrous nature of the muscles. Once the muscles are done, we move on to the face. Here we will need to be a bit more careful and make sure we're using a brush with a good tip. This sculpt has a lot of good detail on the face and it's pretty easy to pick that out with the tip of a brush. Just make sure you leave some of the purple between the details on the brow and around the nose. The face has prominent cheekbones, so we only want to apply this layer to the lower parts of the mandible, towards the chin. Having the purple under the cheekbones here will make sure he looks gaunt and monstrous. And with that mid-tone layer applied, it's time to blend it in with some glazes of the forest skin colour. We'll start on his shoulders and his back. As I'm using a zenith or light, this is the area that will receive the most light, so we don't need to be too careful with the glazes here as the deepest shadows here should be lighter than the deepest shadows elsewhere on the mini. When we get to the face we just want to be careful and use the tip of the brush to go over the previous layer and that should smooth out the transitions without getting rid of the purple. For the first highlights, I'm using a 50-50 mix for the forest skin and pale flesh from the same malefic paint set from Vallejo. The pale flesh is very similar to Rakar flesh. I wanted a slightly grey skin tone to push the undead feeling. Be careful and apply a smaller layer to the details of the face. We still want to see some of that purple in the face. Make sure to pick out the brow, the cheekbones and the nose. Those are the areas that will catch the most light. A 
apply a layer to either side of the top lip, leaving some purple under the nose. Then pick out the edges of the mandible and highlight the chin. With the highlight layer applied to the face, we'll now highlight the rest of the skin, focusing the highlights to the upper parts. Some of the larger curved areas, like the bicep, I use a little stippling to help make the blending of the transition easier later on. With the large muscles on the back and shoulders, I use my brush strokes to follow the direction and flow of the muscle, making the most of the natural grain the muscles have. I'm applying a strong highlight to the top of the thighs as these are almost perfectly horizontal and so would catch a lot of light from above. We also want to make sure we highlight the knee as this is a bony hard edge that would also catch light. The highlights we apply to the calf muscles should make sure that they feel round and then we also want to pick out the ankles and the toes. With that layer done, we want to thin some of that mix down and using the tip of the brush just glaze over the transitions into this highlight layer and just smooth out those layers. We'll do the same for the face, just being careful to make sure we glaze from the transition into the highlight. Now I'm going to add more highlights, this time with pure pale flesh. These highlights on the face will be very small now, Focusing on the pointy bits of the detail, the nose, the upper lips, the bony corners of the cheekbones and jaw. With this final layer of highlights, we will be applying them more selectively only applying them to the parts of the muscles that are pointing up towards the sky. Next I'm going to apply some glazes of AK Burnt Red, but any dark red should do. As the glazes will be applied to the whole of the forearms and the hands, covering all the shadows and highlights, you'll need to make sure that the highlights on the knuckles especially are fairly strong, as the glazing will dull them down slightly. I wanted this step to add a feeling that the hands had been stained with the blood of many victims, and this should add a little extra character to this monster.
I've gone over the hair with a black paint and now I'm going to highlight it using AK's uh, anthracite grey. Here we'll be using the tip of the brush to pick out some of the strands of the hair and highlight the hair where it curves over the top from the brow. Now I've mixed a little ice yellow in with the anthracite grey and I'm going to use that to add uh, some finer highlights to the top of the previously highlighted strands to the temple and uh, highlights on the very top of the hair uh, where you can see from the when looking from the front. So now all we have left is his loincloth. I'm going to apply a base coat of AK Violet Red to the loincloth to help tie it in with the rest of the model. Once the base coat is dried, we'll glaze over it like we did with the skin. I'm going to use the anthracite grey as a highlight focusing on the upper edges of the cloth. The highlights at the top of the line cloth, where it rests on the thighs, will almost completely cover it, as this forms a line joining the thighs that are already catching a lot of light, so this area should catch a lot of light too. The shadows should be lighter than the shadows at the bottom of the line cloth. Apply a quick glaze layer to smooth out the transitions and then I add a little grey, almost white to the anthracite grey here for a highlight. I'm going to apply this with a little bit of stippling mixed in as the loincloth should feel tatty and worn. And now I'll just come back with a glaze of the anthracite grey just to smooth out the transitions a little bit and especially to smooth out the areas where the loincloth is in contact with the thighs. And now for the final detail, the tongue. Just take some of the highlight from the loincloth, mix that in with the violet red, and we've got a nice purple there for the tongue. We'll just apply a layer to there, and then we'll do a little stippling, just to add a bit of texture to the tongue.
glue him to a base and he's done. Well, I've really enjoyed painting this fantastic gas mini from the Lion's Tower. I love that Golem-esque pose. He's a fantastic addition to my D&D mini collection. I hope you've enjoyed or found this video useful. And until next time, thanks for watching.